This video contains a hidden image, a visage so shocking that it must be locked away in the deepest depths of the video. Let me know if you find it. Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece. My name is Liam and your name isn't. And today we have important information, important information regarding One Piece, the end of the series that we all like, assumedly. If someone watching this video doesn't like One Piece, yeah, well, let me know in the comments. Otherwise, we're about to go through another SBS, this time of volume 99. And for those unfamiliar, this is sort of like an informal Q&A segment in every manga volume, where Oda usually gets questions like, Odachi, you know how the symbol pi is red? It's red like pi. Then please read this sentence. Onami's opai are the best. Opai, of course, meaning breasts in Japanese. And yes, this is a real submission because I am not clever enough to have made that up. It's actually quite a fun pun. However, mixed in with all of the, uh, the genital questions are some really important stuff that for whatever reason just never makes it into the series, either the anime or the manga. And we're going to begin our question quest with a quick round of Eustace Kid or Eustace Squid, a very simple mini game, the rules of which are as follows. In an alternate timeline, our crimson headed worst generation member is about to eat a devil fruit. And it's going to be your job to guess whether it's his Magneto-esque Paramecia or if it's a Zoan type that turns him into a Eustace Squid. Should you guess incorrectly, then your punishment will be to subscribe to the Grand Line Review, resulting in consistent injections of One Piece culture administered straight into your YouTube feed. And if you are correct, then you shall receive your own squid-based devil fruit. Lucky you. So what will it be? Used to skid or used to squid? Make your choice now and we shall reveal the answer in three, two, one, and bam, it's, uh, it's a fairly run of the mill used to skid. So if you guess squid for whatever reason, then you know the thing to do and please do say hi in the comments below if you are a new member of the Grand Fleet, welcome. With all of that said, our very first question reveals some major information about kid and it goes something as follows. Reader, in volume nine, you revealed Kaido's devil fruit name, but could you please give us the name of Kid's devil fruit? Oh, oh, actually, yes. Important thing, speaking of Kaido's devil fruit, this video will almost certainly contain spoilers for anime only watches. So you've been warned and uh, proceed at your own risk. But Oda's answer to the Kid inquiry is the Jiki Jiki no Mi or the magnet magnet fruit. And he goes on to say, oh, I didn't mention it before, huh? I should have mentioned it somewhere within the main story. Next time I'll draw something about it. So this is a lot of fun because we as fans have been incredibly eager to discover the name of Kid's Devil Fruit ever since he first used it on Sabadi, which was, you know, around half a thousand chapters ago at this point. Oh damn, that was, uh, that was a long time ago. So the fact that Oda hadn't revealed it meant that this sort of fruit went on to achieve an almost conspiracy theory-like status amongst the fan base. Because why wouldn't you name it? It's such a simple thing to do. So it must mean that Oda is hiding its name for some kind of amazing, grand, and yes, even shocking reveal. And as it turns out, I'll leave just forgot he hadn't put the name in the actual manga. Oh, silly Oda. Just, you know, accidentally going on to troll an entire fan base for well over a decade. We do tend to give Oda a bit too much credit for how quote unquote intricately planned One Piece is. A truly stunning amount of the series is improvised and just made up of fun accidents like this. But I am glad that Kid's Fruit has been officially named at last. Reader, in chapter 966, Roger and Ray Lee said as they were holding up Momonosuke and Hiori, I haven't spent time with a baby in ages and reminds me of the old days. But in those old days, whose baby did they spend time with? It doesn't seem like there's any women aboard Roger's ship, so? Oda, eh? They said that? That's just <laughs> sweat. Just skip that bit. It's nothing to worry about. Nothing to worry about. You, few, which is apparently whistle noises. All right, so this was something that fans jumped on pretty immediately when it happened because it was like, it was a really weird thing to say considering what we know of Roger and Rayleigh and the Roger Pirates at large. The currently speculated answer is that Roger was referring to Shanks and or Buggy, whom they may have raised since Babby Hood aboard the Orange Jackson. Timeline wise, it is kind of fun because Shanks and Buggy are the exact same age. They're both 39 post time skip. However, the events of God Valley occurred 38 years ago. Hmm. Which would mean that they were both infants at the time of the conflict with the Rocks Pirates. However, there's also another thing, a big thing, which is that the Roger Pirates reached Lodestar Island 39 years ago. So there's a lot of very convenient things happening around this 39 years ago realm. And it's even spawned theories that they may have found Buggy on Lodestar Island. I say Buggy specifically because he is confirmed to have been born in the Grand Line. And according to other sets of information, Shanks was allegedly born in West Blue. Either way, this is very much the leading idea for Roger and Rayleigh's time as baby wielders. Reader, Odachi, good evening. 
Among straw hats, who cuts someone's hair when it grows too long? Oda. There's three of them who are pretty good at cutting hair, so whenever someone's in need, they'll ask them. The three in question would be Usopp, Sanji, and Robin. This is one of those questions that I'm surprised we haven't heard the answer to before, but here we are. Usopp, he makes a lot of sense, especially post time skip, because he is essentially a gardener by trade, so that does make him uniquely equipped to trim Zoro's head hedge. Sanji is also a pretty solid choice, because when it comes to his hands, they excel at work involving finesse and he does understand the concept of aesthetics, I suppose. Although I do think it would be hilarious if he just gave everyone his hair cut because he sees it as the peak of fashion. And obviously Zoro would not allow Sanji to cut his hair, so that would need to be Usopp or Robin. And speaking of, I imagine that Robin probably takes care of Nami's hair. I really, really cannot imagine Nami allowing Usopp or Sanji anywhere near her head with scissors. But you know what? The biggest surprise here is that Frankie isn't a barber as well. He's probably the most hair aware crew member and he does know quite a a variety of cuts. I would probably have Frankie do my hair because look, well, that's, that's the worst that could happen. Reader, about Otoko's mom, or in other words, Yasuya's wife, what type of person was she? Is she still alive? Oda. Long ago, Yasuya used to be married without any children, but after he lost his wife, he remained single. After losing to Kaido and surviving, he found a little baby at Ibisu Town. That baby was Otoko. Otoko does not know yet that they are not connected by blood. Oh, all right, so in case you were unaware, we previously had some big information information dumped on us about Yasu that makes his character especially lovable and especially, especially tragic. One of which is that he is not Toko's biological father, but in case you missed it, the other is that Yasu is not a smile user. Apparently Yasu was always just smiling and laughing for the sake of attempting to bring some legitimate joy to Toko and the other citizens of Ibisu Town, which is so stupidly classic Oda. Well, I hate it, but I love it because it's so beautiful, but so painful and very much the sort of thing that Oda excels at. And looking back on his execution is even more tragic because even then he refused to stop smiling. The one thing that I will say is that I really wish this information had made it into, you know, the actual series because I think that story is very powerful and deserves to be told. Yes, it would have made act two even longer, but I personally would be very okay with that. I mean, when it comes to One Piece, does length even matter? Short answer, no. Long answer. Yes. Reader. Odachi Heso, which is a nice Skypea reference, please draw Nami's climb attacked in anthropomorphized form, asking in the name of all fans of Nami-san. To which Oda says, sure, here you go, and then we are presented with something I can only describe as this. In recent years, this has become by far my favorite part of the SBS segments. We've been on quite a roll of anthropomorphizing all of the named swords in the series, and it looks like we're finally branching out into, you know, more extended weaponry. Although the climb attacked comes at a really fascinating time because us delightful manga readers will know that the Clam Attack is now actually a living, breathing, anthropomorphized entity. That is not the only piece of anthropomorphization in this SBS, however, and I want you guys to really prepare yourselves for what's coming next because, well, it's, it's quite something. Reader, please anthropomorphize everyone's beloved Yamato's side boo. Oda, sure, anthropomorphization is my specialty. Long ellipsis, as if an anthropomorphized side boo, he says. And then and he says that he still wanted to give it a shot and I'm glad he did because I actually really love this. It's such a good image, just like this plump man peering out of a flimsy sheet. In fact, if you look carefully, this anthropomorphized side boob even has side boob of its own, as well as a lot, and I mean a lot of like front boob. And Oda does continue with, honestly, geez, I received a disturbing amount of postcards asking for Yamato's side boob or his bare breasts. Come on guys, we're almost at volume 100. Stop using your postcard for such depraved requests. Since when have they all been like this? To which I would answer since forever because you, Oda, are like this. But that's not the big thing here because look at that, we've used a pronoun and pronouns are dangerous in this day and age. So I don't talk about this a lot because it's usually not worth turning the comment section into an absolute shitstorm. But One Piece as a whole, including its characters, its author, and even its publisher do officially refer to Yamato as he, which if there ever was a debate, that succinctly closes it. For me. Yamato was also referred to as he during the World Top 100 Character Poll live stream results. So if you do take issue with me calling Yamato he in chapter reviews and other videos and stuff, okay, I, just, I don't know what to tell you. That's just the kind.
canon of One Piece. But please do continue to enjoy my new favoritest phrase in the world, which is anthropomorphized side boob. But with that out of the way, we also have another Yamato related question. Rita, Odachi, please tell us the age, height, and favorite food of Yamato. Oda, sure, a very straightforward question, which I suppose it would be compared to the last one actually. And since you asked, here are the answers. We then go on to say that Yamato is 28 years old, was born in the same year as Momonosuke, which is pretty fun. Yamato's height is 2.63 meters, which is massive. And his favorite food is of course, Odin. However, he also really likes salmon and raw salmon at that. I do love that one of Yamato's favorite foods is Odin, even if it is the obvious answer. It could very much have gone the other way as well. And Yamato's least favorite food could have been Odin, considering Kozuki Odin's rather ironic method of death. Sort of like how Haridin's least favorite food is Semla after that whole Elbaf incident with Charlotte Lin Lin. Rita, Jinbei-san, congratulations on officially joining the Straw Hat crew. I was waiting for you. Please tell us all of the detailed character info for him that was given in the previous SBSs for the other crew members. All right, so this is gonna be a bit of an info dump of a question, but in case you are unaware, over the last almost 25 years, there is this list of questions that every Straw Hat has had answered about themselves. So obviously we now require Jinbei's info. Oda, sure. The letter also included all that I needed to answer. It's all the details I've given about Luffy and the others up until now. His being Jinbei's favorite food was already revealed in the Vivia Card data book to be Mosku seaweed vinegar and fruits. Beyond those, here's the rest. Least favorite food is parfait, apparently because it's hard to eat. And his associated color and number are 10 and ochre. And you know, this surprises me somewhat. The number 10 doesn't because well, that's clear. That's the order in which he joined the crew, but the color ochre, mm, it's a very cultured choice, Mr. Shark Man. As a color, it's a very earthy, natural, I suppose almost clay-like existence. Not one that I would immediately assign to Jinbei, but looking back on it, a couple of his outfits definitely make heavy use of ochre. So it's kind of like a nice contrast, this earthy color juxtaposed against Jinbei's very sea-like body. His position in the crew, if they were a family, would be father, which is interesting because apparently Frankie was the father before, but now that Jinbei's here, Frankie has been relegated to the pervy granny. Slight downgrade Frankie, but at the same time it fits. Jinbei apparently smells like the sea. His associated Japanese prefecture is Kagoshima. I know absolutely nothing about that. And Jinbei's associated country is India. I never would have thought India, that's very intriguing. Jinbei's associated animal is a bear. His cooking specialty is a katsuo no tataki, a Japanese fish dish, which I have no concept of. And Jinbei sleeps from 3 a.m. to 9 a.m., which sounds dangerously like my sleep schedule. In fact, I think it's only about an hour off. I'm usually a 2 a.m. to 8 a.m. kind of guy. What goes on in Jinbei's brain is the following. Virtue, virtue, fist, water, wiseness. And out of context, this is going to make no sense. To be honest, even in context, it's a bit weird, especially the fist bit. But Oda was once asked what was perpetually going on inside Luffy's head. So he boiled down every Straw Hat's thoughts to five or six words each. So another example of that would be Brooke's thoughts, which are panties, panties, laugh, tea, tea. Or Luffy's, which were much more simplistic. Meat, 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 meat and king. But back to Jinbei. His profession, if he wasn't a pirate, would be train station stuff. Does he chew or swallow his eyes? Apparently Jinbei is inferior because he swallows. His favorite season is fall, specifically at a summer island, and his associated flower is a peony, which I don't know if I'm pronouncing correctly, but I don't care enough to look up. It's semi-interesting though, because I thought it was Robin's voice actor who assigned the flowers to every straw hat, but uh, well, look, we now have a lot of largely useless information about Jinbei, so hooray. Within the SBS, Oda also revealed to us his top three smile fruit users. I'm not going to go through the entire answer because it's quite long-winded, but in order of least to most favorite is Speed, Hamlet, and Hold'em. So look, I'm gonna be honest here. I do think that Fortrix was absolutely robbed, even if this is based purely on you know, <laughs> personal preferences, ooh. But at the very least, Hold'em does have a fun explanation attached to him, just as he has a fun lion attached to his, his, uh, his bits. Because apparently he was inspired by a mecha anime called Future Robot Daltanius, which features a big old robot thing with a lion on its chest. So of course Oda took that lion and put it on someone's crotch instead. And speaking of things that look like deformed crotches, Rita, I have the request of a lifetime. Please let Steli sit on the empty throne. Oda, no. Or Steli, but to fulfill your request of a lifetime, yes, I do have another Grand Line review video here for you to watch. It's a lot of fun. All of them are a lot of fun to watch, but especially this one. So I very much look forward to seeing you there.